Hey guys, uh, today I want to share with you something I'm really excited about. It's called the Airlift Vortex Compost Tea Brewer. So uh, basically here it is. Um, I learned about this design from Drake who teaches Korean natural farming classes. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but the guy that actually invented this thing here and has a patent for this design um, I'll show right here really interesting guy go check out his website maybe um, but yeah the the designs online are actually from uh, buildthesoil.com that's where I got these designs and I actually completed this project for um, about a hundred bucks so let's check it out so at the beginning of this video you guys saw it running and I'll show it running some more but it's a little loud and I just want to walk you through how this thing works because it's actually really really interesting how it works and once you understand how it works you'll get why this is such a cool design. Um, so first of all you might notice it's all held together by this metal frame. I weld this baby up and that just goes to show you how in love I am with this here design. I spent time to actually build a custom frame for it. Um, but really any frame will do and it's it's basically just um, one and a half inch PVC. And again, like if you wanna actually build this thing, uh, have the link in the description, you can go build it. But let's just um, kind of go through how exactly it works. And then let's watch it run some more because it's really beautiful actually. So up here above the water, you have your uh, air pump, pumps out air, um, hence air lift. So why is it air lift? Well, because you can imagine the weight of the water is sitting in the tank and it basically wants to come to an equilibrium. So this side uh, is, is closed but you open it once you want to drain it. So the water will come through here and it will actually come up here to this, the same height, say, as right here, okay? So to get it over the top and into the bucket, you that's when you need the air to give it that last little push. So the air is being pumped into here and, um, and yeah, basically, the path of least resistance is to just to pump the water over this hump here. Because remember, the water is already here. You just got to pump it over the hump. So that's what it does. Um, and a consequence of that is that basically water is traveling through here, making that circuit. And as it does so, you know, it's just like it creates a vortex. You know, that's just the consequence of that. And so the, the really cool part about this is two things. One, you're getting really, really good oxygenation. You're getting lots of dissolved oxygen into the water. And the guy that invented this actually uh, has measured various designs and has claimed that this design performs the best in terms of dissolved oxygen content. And it makes a whole lot of sense for two reasons. One the water is being oxygenated in this tube as the air flows through this tube and the water. Uh, so basically it's like an air stone effect here. So that's great. But then once you have the vortex going, um, the vortex exposes a lot of the water surface area to oxygen and it mixes oxygen into the water. So it's like you have the air stone effect, but then you also have this vortexing effect which is really quite cool um and the other beautiful part about this is notice that the circuit that the water makes never goes through a motor it never interacts with the internal structure of a motor not that that would necessarily kill biology but it it makes it a whole lot better because you never have to worry about uh the internal components of your motor being exposed to, you know, things like molasses and, and, and then the biofilms that will grow. So that's, it's pretty great. Um, now I did make a few modifications to the design online and 
I don't think I'm gonna explain that now. Maybe later. Um, but basically, it makes it really quick to clean. I basically have it where you can um, close this section off, close this section off, and then pump water through here, and then it will flush out the pipes without having to dismantle anything. So I quite like that, and I think it actually works pretty good. So let's let's turn on again and watch the thing, and then maybe I'll explain how I would uh, set up the the brew process. But we're not going to go into exact recipes or anything. So let's do it. Okay, so you turn it on and it takes a little bit for the vortex to actually form. Um, so let's watch it form. Alright, something's happening. Okay, it's getting stronger. Boom. We are vortexing. So what's so cool is that you can like throw in, um, let's say for example, um, worm castings. You could like just throw it in and the worm castings will cycle through this whole thing and they can't get caught up in anything because um, the whole time, whatever you put in here is going to be moving through one and a half inch pipe. So if it can fit through one and a half inch pipe, you can just throw it in. And I've actually just like thrown mushrooms, like fruiting mushrooms like straight up into here. I don't recommend it, but like it'll just suck it through and it's, it's, it's just like there's nothing else like it really that can do that. So I love it. Um, yeah, hopefully you can hear. But, you know, you would just get a bag and whatever you could uh, put your inoculant in there or whatever. Okay, so someone's probably wondering why the motor is way up here above the uh, vortexing water. Um, yeah, that's just because, uh, so the water can't, like, travel up this tube and, like, go back into the, uh, air pump. If, if the air pump was below the level of the water, then that would happen. And I think that you could just put a one-way valve in here and, you know, have the air pump sit wherever you would like. So that's a part of the design that... I didn't realize when I built it, but it's it's not the best thing to have such a heavy object uh, way up high. So I would try uh, just putting a one-way valve in and then you could stick this thing down low, you know? But hey, whatever, it works. So um, I think we understand like why oxygenating this works and is important, blah, blah, blah. But there is some like really cool esoteric aspects to the whole vortex itself. Um, so yeah, like maybe I'll just mention that if vortexed water um, is actually, it gets cooler. So the temperature of vortex water um, goes down as you vortex it. And um, there's, this, there's this researcher, um, Dr. Polak, who wrote this book, I'll just put it right here, The Fourth Phase of Water. Um, very, very interesting book. And he has theories as to why vortex water will cool down. And basically the idea is that there's this notion that you are restructuring the water. And as your water becomes restructured and more organized, the entropy actually goes down, hence it gets colder. So you're actually lowering the entropy of the water um, by vortexing it, making it more ordered. So take that for what it's worth, and I'm not really sure what it's worth, um, but it's interesting, and it's definitely a cool aspect to this design, you know? For me, it's a cherry on top, but for some people it might be the main reason to do it. I don't know if that's justified or not, but hey, it's pretty cool.